Now is the moment, finally, after all this time installing Node, setting up Node, running NPM, getting an API key, signing up for Twitter, all of that nonsense, it's time to finally write some code that connects to the Twitter API. Search for tweets, get an event every time somebody at mentions you, uh, download images from Twitter, all sorts of things, post tweets to Twitter. Uh, we're finally, I'm finally gonna, uh, I think in this video, get to show you all that stuff. So, this is where we are so far. We just have a simple node program, says that it's starting, authenticates using a separate config.js file that I showed you in the previous video, uses the twit package, and now the, before I start to get writing code, let's talk about what the kinds of commands you can issue to the Twitter API. So there, I would put these in under three categories. You can call, with, with twit and, and with the API, you can make a get request, so with a get request, uh, some things you might do is search. And you could search you know, by like hashtag, you could search by location, you could search by user. There's lots of ways you could search and just say, give me all the tweets that have JavaScript, give me all the tweets about rainbows. Uh, I don't have any guy, I feel like I need some hashtags associated with this rainbow, with this rainbow, <laughs> with this with this set of videos. I don't know, I'll think of something. Think of something yourself. Um, and then uh, another other kind of command that you might issue to the API is a post. And this is where you're actually tweeting. Twittering. Twitting. Twittering. Tweeting. Okay. Um, post. Uh, post is a where you're actually like posting to the, so you, uh, you have some uh, generative poetry machine you made, it has a bit of text and boom, it automatically posts to Twitter through making a post. So we need to look at those two. And the third one, which is gonna be, I might not do in this particular video, but is super important, is this idea of a stream. So the difference between these first two ways of querying the API, get is just like, give me 100 tweets, we're done. We're never talking to each other again, unless I ask her 100 more tweets. I don't know if you can actually get 100 at a time, but a post is like, please post this for me. Okay, we're done. I, I might ask you to post again later, but right now we're done. Stream is like, let's, let's be connected, Twitter API. Like, let's just be one, we are one. And whenever something happens, I want you to tell me about it. We've got like this continuous connection, like a socket connection, which is a kind of network connection. So you can assign certain kinds of events to the stream. So if you want to, have, and where I'm using this in one of my examples is, anytime somebody at mentions me on Twitter, this stream triggers an event and I could have some code that replies back. Um, so these are the three methodologies. So let's look, uh, let's look first at, uh, you know, in a way, this is all you need. I'm tempted to just like only show you post because that's all you need. But let's just look at, let's actually look at each one of these kind of in a vacuum in this particular video, and in the next video we'll set up the structure for how a bot might work, whether it's tweeting every five minutes or one hour, or tweeting based on a stream. So let's look at each one of these first. Okay, so um, coming back over here, hello, uh, I'm gonna go, what I think the most useful place for us to look would be back to the GitHub, the Twit API, the, sorry, the Twit package GitHub page, which I'll try to include a link to it, but you can see is up here. And so now you can see, okay, there's some stuff here like post and search. So you can see a post is making a status update. Uh, so each one of these kinds of, I, I think there's like this term like endpoint, or whatever, but let's not worry about the terminology. <laughs> the action, the verb I'm doing is a post or a get, and I'm modifying that get or post with some text. Like I might want to, post a status update, or I might want to post some media, you'll see when uploading an image. But let's look at this get one first. So I'm just gonna grab this code, and I'm gonna paste it into my program. Now I'm gonna, you close, you avert your eyes for a second, and I'm actually going to uh, change something about it. I'm gonna grab this. Uh, well, I don't have a lot of, but this big font, I don't have a lot of space here. And I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna rewrite this for a second just to give you some more room. So uh, this is a little bit tricky here because I, I made this kind of awkward. Actually, okay, I'm gonna, I, got, I got an idea. Sorry, <laughs> I was daydreaming again. Um, I'm gonna uh, do this. I'm, I'm rewriting this code in a way that I feel like might be a little bit more digestible for us to look at. 
Um, and ah, <laughs> I should have done this in advance. <laughs> it's okay. Just just take it. You know, meditate for a minute or something while I'm like anal, anally retentively like aligning <laughs> all of the. I, I'm gonna stop. I, it's okay. I can I, I can live with this. Okay. So what I did uh, just just if you were wondering is in the in the um, uh, sorry I just have to fix my I'm really like. I, I've been thinking about making uh, this uh, video called The Anal Retentive Coder, which is like based on the Silent Life, Life sketch, The Anal Retentive Chef. But I don't need to get into that now. But if, you, if you're interested in that, just <laughs> remind me. I'll make that video for you. But that's, I kind of have a problem. But what I, the reason why I did all that, it just took me a minute or two to like reformat this, is often uh, uh, JavaScript code is written in this very like, I'm going to write this all this code in this like one line of code. And it's going to have a function call with a couple objects in it and then an anonymous function to another function with a callback. And I think for teaching and for learning and for practicing, it's often easier to like break the stuff out into pieces. So, um, you know, I don't have any problem with this. This is actually, you know, not that much and sort of simple. But what I did is I took this example which had a function call, an object as an argument to that, and then another function as an, as an argument to that function call, and I broke it into three pieces. So this here is the get request. I am asking Twitter to search for tweets, and then I need to give it some more information about what to search for. And so I can give it a query term like rainbow. Uh, um, I was gonna, uh, and then, oh, coding rainbow, that's it. Hashtag coding rainbow, that's the hashtag for this, for this uh, video, whatever. Uh, and count 100, so I want, and, and let's, just, let's just ask for like two tweets back to be like a little bit simpler about this. So I can modify the search with a bunch of things. And if you go look in the Twitter API documentation, you'll see there's lots of other kind of parameters for the search that you might put there. And then I need a callback function. I need a function that will be triggered when the, um, I need a function that will be triggered when the data has been returned from the API. This is just like, uh, you know, jQuery, Ajax call, or a P5JS load JSON call. So you set up this API query, you give it a callback, you play with the data when the callback comes back. So you make an object that has some parameters in it, you trigger the get, I want to search Twitter, um, you give it the parameters, you have the callback. And so let's see what happens here. Now if we run this particular thing, I'm like afraid if this is going to work or not. Please work. Hey, look, so we got all this stuff. Uh, how am I supposed to make sense of this? So this is this is like a little bit of a problem now, which is that like, okay, I, there's all this JSON, like uh, I could like paste this into the another file and I could look at it. And so in the end, I, I think maybe it might be, one of the things that I often do is actually have Node write out the results to a text file and then I can like look at it later and I could show you a technique for doing that at some point. But here we can actually, you know, I could even probably pretty easily kind of like figure out that I'm, I think what's, what I'm looking for, uh, scrolling, 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 this is actually really hard to, to find, is I'm looking for um, status text uh, um, source, there it is, uh, text. So this is what I'm looking for, like the text of the tweet. You can see it has some like emojis in it. And you can see this statuses, right. So the beginning of the object is statuses, then there is, a, um, then there is an array, and the thing that I want in the array is text. So for example, something I could do here is I could say, all right, uh, var tweets equals data dot statuses. And I could say for var i equals zero, i is less than tweets dot length, i plus plus. And I could just say now console dot log, uh, console dot log tweets index i dot text. Now, I'm pretty sure I got that right, just because I've used the Twitter API before and I have a sense of how the JSON is structured. And there's a lot more information, like who is the tweet from? Was it a retweet? You know, uh, does it have any hashtags? There's all sorts of things you can find out in there. But at least now, we could try running it again. And you can see I got program your own rainbow dash vote it's Manuela Alex because a double rainbow is hard to find. So you can see I got the raw text from those tweets there. So again, this is it. There's not a lot of code here. Like this, that's what we spent all this time like figuring out how to install that package because the package does it all for you. So we now are able to search Twitter and go through it. Now, you know what? It might be worth actually, let's go look at the Twitter API documentation because I kind of did that because I kind of half already know how to do that. That was, a, that was a little bit like cheating you a little bit. So let's go and see like what if you really wanted to figure this out, you could go to the, um, 
to dev.twitter.com. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna do a Google search for like Twitter API get. Uh, and then one thing I might do is paste this search dash search slash tweets. If I do that, you can see, look at this. I found a reference page, dev.twitter.com rest reference get search tweets. So you can see this would hopefully now um, be the page that's the most useful to you because you can see here like a bunch of things like the query that I was looking for, rainbow, I could add a geocode, a language, all sorts of things, the count. You can see these are the other types of parameters that could go inside this object right here to modify that search. And then down here you can see an example result. So this is where I would want to look and see like, okay, uh, what I need is uh, the object statuses uh, and uh, then looking for uh, uh, and, and kind of go through and, and, and see that text is here. Excuse me, I, I just burped on a live stream. That's very, and a recorded, this is going to be recorded. All right, okay, fair. So we can like edit that sound clip out and make some song out of it. Maybe you couldn't hear that at all. Um, so aggressive pony, anyway, I don't want to um, get too far into this. If you're interested in how you like search through JSON or how JSON is formatted, I have some other videos that I'll try to remember to link to uh, that you can look at that'll get you up to speed there. So that's how you can see how you can kind of like figure out exactly like what goes in here and what goes in here. But the structure is here now for you. Require the twit package, make a, authenticate, set up some parameters, make a get request, handle that get request. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, I'm at 12 minutes. Um, in the, let's, let me do the post, because the post is kind of easy. We're going to get to that in, two, in really fast. So I'm going to, let's go for it. Maybe we'll do streaming in the next video or a little bit later. So post is the next thing that you might want to do. So get, which is searching on Twitter, post is tweeting. So what I should be able to do now is add a, um, and I'm going to leave this stuff, up, I'm going to leave this stuff at the bottom. Actually, let me just do, um, I'm going to do save as uh, bot2.js. I probably should make a whole new node thing, but I'll, just so I can get rid of this code for a second. And uh, what I'm going to do is now go back to the GitHub page for the twit. <laughs> I never thought at any point in my life I'd be saying things like, I'm gonna go back to the GitHub page for the twit. Like, what does that even mean? Um, and I'm gonna look under post here, and I'm gonna grab this example, t.post, and I'm gonna do the same thing to it. So what do I need for t.post? I need, I need to post, I need the path, I want a status update. I need an object that's gonna have the information for that status update, like the, I'll call it the tweet, and then I'll call the callback tweeted. How many variations of the word twit, tweet, tweeter, twit can, can one possibly have? A lot, apparently. So what I need to do here is first make that tweet object, and actually the only thing that needs to go in that tweet object is uh, uh, hashtag coding rainbow. Uh, and so that's my tweet, hashtag coding rainbow uh, from node.js. Uh, and then I need to have, again, a callback function tweeted with, it, with these arguments. Now, I didn't really talk about this. There's like a whole bunch of arguments uh, so I'm just kind of fixing this up. And you can see I'm doing the same exact thing here. I have my tweet object, which is one parameter. Obviously, there could be more things. As you're going to see, if I'm going to like tweet with an image, I might have like a, 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 a property of this tweet object that has a, a media element to it. I'm going to post to the Twitter API a status update. I'm going to post this status update. And this is the callback when it's finished. So a couple things. Number one is, you don't really need the callback here because there's no information you need back. You're just sending to Twitter. But it's often useful to have a callback because what if it doesn't work? What if you have a, the wrong API key? Or what if there's like, you have more than 140 characters or there's an invalid character or something else goes wrong? So you can see here, there's like three different arguments, error, data, response. And so I, that was probably in the other one as well. Um, error, you could imagine if you're gonna, that error argument or parameter is filled with information should there be an error. So something you can often do is say something like if error console.log, you know, something went wrong. Uh, otherwise, I could say console.log data. And somewhere in here, I could pull out, you know, 
something from there. But I, I, what I might just do is just say like, it works <laughs> right now. So here I just want my bot that I'm making to when, when, after it posts a tweet, to either say something went wrong or it worked. Now this isn't great practice because ultimately if something goes wrong, I need to figure out what that error is and really log it. So you, you, you know, that's something you could certainly do, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. So this is it, right? All that you need to do to post to Twitter from Node is this. Set up the tweet, t.post, have a callback. Now, of course, when we make the bot, we have to figure out how do you schedule that and all of that. But for now, let's just see if this works. So I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm going to go back here. And I made this, by the way, a file called bot2. So I'm going to run bot2 right now. I'm going to run it. The bot is starting. I see that it worked. I'm going to go to Twitter. Oh my god, this is like, uh, uh, where am I going? I don't know. I'm like way too excited here. Uh, I'm going to go to my A to Z account. And I'm going to see that there it is. There's my tweet that I tweeted from Node. Hashtag, co it looks like it says coding rainbow, but that's a little bit weird. But anyway, coding rainbow from Node.js. So this is great. So now you've really got a lot of stuff to work with because, you know, first of all, I could have searched Twitter for the term rainbow, and then I could have like put all those things into like an array, and then I could have taken one word from each tweet, and I could have mashed them up. You know, the possibilities are endless of what you can do in terms of querying and reposting, or you know, you could make a Twitter uh, bot that just picks a random number and tweets the random number every time you run it. So what I would do is come up with some really sort of drop dead simple idea of how you might generate a tweet just from a little bit of code, a random number or something, or pick something from an array, or even just like hard code <laughs> the tweet in there, get your node program tweeting to the account. Once you have that, you're absolutely ready for the next step. The next step is scheduling it like a bot, <laughs> and, then, um, and then ultimately, I would also want to touch on how to use the stream thing. And oh, as if I've forgotten, we, I need to show you how to use processing to make images that you could tweet. Oh, it's already 12.10, oh my goodness. I don't know how I'm gonna get to all this today, but I'm gonna try to keep going. Okay, um, oh, I have to stop this video. <laughs> uh, 